make a wine glass here. So let's load the wine glass reference in through the front. Front camera here. From here I'll scale it and move it back along the z-axis just so I don't have the, the image plane bisecting the wine glass. Um, from here I like to sometimes add my reference to a layer. You don't have to, but you can certainly do this because it can help organize your scene and you can easily turn it on, on and off with a V for visible. Over here in this blank box, we can switch to template or R for reflet, reference. <clears throat> Excuse me. So either one of those will make the object on the display layer unselectable. So now it's impossible to select, impossible to move by accident. So it's just a convenient way to make sure that you don't select your image plane. Template makes it invis invisible, so reference is the way you want to go with the, the R letter here on your display layer. Next, we'll make a curve to trace around the wine glass. So you can use any curve you want, but I'll use the Bezier curve up here on the, um, the last button on the curves, uh, not the last button on the curve shelf, but the last button in regards to curves, I guess the very last curve icon, you could say. This is the, uh, the Bezier curve. So if, you've, if you have any, um, experience using the Bezier tool in Photoshop or Illustrator, it's very much the same thing as the pen tool. So hopefully this part won't be too difficult because this is more or less the same as the pen tool in Photoshop or Illustrator. So I trace around the side of the glass until I get to the top here, you can either hit Z for undo or actually I think the backspace will also work. Yeah. So either undo or use backspace. Either one will get you back through your points in case you need to draw them over again. So click and drag to use your Bezier. When you get to the top of the glass, you want to establish some thickness. So go out a bit and then go back down the way you came. And this is again kind of establishing the thickness of the glass. Go back around this way. And then always end with grid snapping and the center line. At this point, I can turn off my, um, my image plane here and then just if I need to move these points around again, for example, right click control vertex, I can maybe clean this up a little bit. I don't know if I want this, this little dimple kind of at this point. So maybe move the handle in this case. Or you can move the control vertex as well. All right, try to get the um, thickness of the glass to be about the same, roughly. So I'm just kind of tweaking my control vertices here just to make sure that my glass wall is roughly the same all the way through. So up here, same kind of deal. If you want to um, change these Bezier curves a little bit to, to try to even things out and make sure that your glass thickness is, a, is about equal, roughly, throughout the whole thing. All right, so now that you have that, and again, make sure you grid snap the last point and the first point here. So, like so. As long as it's snapped to the grid, um, you shouldn't have to worry about holes. Um, if you don't grid snap to the global Y axis, then you may have holes. All right, so now that I've got that, these the first point and the last point grid snapped, and again, it's just X for grid snapping, drag on the circle. As long as you have that, you should be able to revolve or lathe this curve without any problems. 
So next hit F8 to get into object mode or right click just as long as the object is green. So object mode. And now we can revolve this. <clears throat> Again on the curve surface shelf, go all the way here past your curves to your surfaces. These are NURB surfaces, by the way. Uh, we won't be using NURBs, but that's what these are. Sphere, cube, uh, cylinder, cone, and yeah, this guy here is, well, it looks like a wine glass, so you guessed it. If you were to click on it, it should just work by default, but just in case, let's check the revolve options. Double click the revolve tool, and again, it looks like a wine glass, and then most importantly, make sure you're revolving around Y. But beyond that, we don't want NURBs, right? We want polygons, so switch to polygons. And then for initial tessellation, switch, well, switch to quads versus triangles, then general, then under general tessellation per span, three each, click apply. And now I have my, my wine glass. From here, I can hit the three button, but I basically have my wine glass done. So I'll save this. I can always merge this into my other scene just by drag and drop or import either one, but I'll save this as wine glass. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, and next, whoop, maybe find a uh, wine bottle reference. Well, I think this is kind of a little bit um, easy um, in the sense that you could use Revolve, but more likely for something like a wine bottle, it's it's very simple and easy, something like this, then probably a Revolve is maybe a bit overkill. I mean, you could revolve the curve, you could revolve the profile curve to create this wine bottle, but in this particular case, I would say, mm, I would simply scale some edge loops on a cylinder. It just seems like it would be a little bit faster. So in these cases, you know, you can either start with the cylinder, scale the edge loops, or um, you can rotate. So I've got my wine glass done. It's a revolved surface. I'll call it wine there. And I mean, I can hide this stuff for right now. I'll go ahead and do the bottle. So same kind of idea. Um, if you want to make a free image plane in this case, as opposed to attaching it to a camera, that's fine too. So go to create free image plane. Go into the attributes, which again, control A. Go to image name. Um, here, put in the, the bottle. I have a lot of stuff, but <clears throat> here we go. So there's the bottle. And so in this case, I could, again, I could revolve the surface, but it just seems like a little bit of overkill because we really don't have that many undulating curves on the profile or on the side here. So again, if we were to take the same approach with the wine bottle, I could draw the curve this way up and around. And that's actually kind of tempting in this case. So, uh, it's kind of up to you as to which approach you want to take. Let's go with the cylinder since I feel like I just did the revolve and let's keep it, keep it exciting, do something a little different. So of course the other way to do this would be to make a cylinder. You could still grid snap it, hold down X, just if you want to put it in the center. But the real trick here is giving it the right, right number of divisions, right? You can always add edge loops as you need to, but there's really no need to go nuts with the divisions here. So probably four to six might be fine. Caps always have at least two, and you can add more again later. So, I mean, there's some argument here as to what is faster in this case. Taking a cylinder, scaling it like so, moving it down. Scaling it vertically. And if things become a little bit hard to see here, we can always switch to X-ray shading. So I repeat again, you have to ask yourself, is it faster to draw a curve for the profile of the bottle, just like the wine glass, and revolve that profile curve? Or 
is it faster to do it this way? Which is to say, add edge loops perhaps where you need them. Like so. Or if you need to slide existing edge loops, that's fine too. So here, we move these up. And we begin to see that uh, maybe the curvature starts here. I can scale from the center, that is the, the center box, this way. Now, it's a little bit hard to see what this is going to look like this way because it's very low poly. But if I hit the three button, then this kind of gives me a better idea of what this is going to look like. And when I hit the three button, I can see, ooh, this needs to be scaled more. These guys perhaps scaled more the other way. Like that. This one I could push up a little bit. And see, now I'm getting the... Uh, shape of the wine bottle just by scaling edge loops. Just remember though, when you're scaling these edge loops, you really want to scale them from the center, right? So even these guys up here, if I if I select all these edge loops, these are vertices of course, but I'm selecting the edge loops by selecting all the vertices, then scale again, but always from the center, you know? The center box is going to be universal, so it'll scale on all three axes. From here, that was pretty fast, so Again, ask yourself, I mean, is it faster to make that profile, cur that profile curve and revolve it, excuse me, or is it faster to just scale edge loops? You can always add edge loops as you need them under mesh tools, insert edge loop. Um, and so if you need to add more, you can. Um, and actually, <laughs> speaking of adding more edge loops, you can kind of see where we've gotten into some problems here where these edge loops are um, overlapping, right? So possible to go a little too aggressive with this, you know, um, maybe add some edge loops here in your base mesh first before hitting the three button. It is possible to have um, too little geometry. That is, that is a, a possible thing here that I don't have enough edge loops. I hit the three button again. That's not bad. So that's what I always do. I test one, two, three. I don't want overlapping geometry, which was definitely something that I had before. So I needed more edge loops in order to prevent overlapping geometry, something you definitely don't want. Um, I could have some more edge loops here at the top as well because we have this kind of ridge in the bottle. So to emphasize the ridge in the bottle or, or model the ridge in the bottle, see, not, not so hard. Arguably, the profile curve might be faster, but... Again, that's kind of up to you. So go to Mesh Tool, Insert Edge Loop. And let's look at the shape first. We kind of want this very distinct ridge around the thing. So let's add extra edge loops where we want the ridge to be. And then extrude those faces. So click twice to get the loop of faces. Then extrude using local translate Z to push this sort of ridge out. So you can kind of see what I mean. Um, in order to preserve this though, remember if I hit the three button, it's going to just sort of go away. So back to adding more edge loops. So mesh tools, um, add edge loops. Usually I would say three edge loops um, are enough to preserve that shape or form. So you can see here, I'm adding three additional edge loops for the bottom, I hit the three button and it's pretty well preserved. So do that for the top as well, where I add three edge loops. It's okay to zoom in a little bit just to make this a little easier. And here's the third edge loop. Hit the three button. You can even add edge loops in here to preserve this. And again, hit the three button. So that, that's pretty good. I'll hit F8. For object mode, hit the three button, and you can see I've got that that ridge. Now we don't have the the hole in the bottle, um, and this is something where I mean, if you were to be completely accurate about this, you probably should have modeled it like the glass, just to have the the thickness of the glass, right? 
So right now, I think the big issue is, is we don't, we just don't have thickness in the glass. It's not going to render pop, uh, properly with the material. So we would like to extrude it. Um, before we extrude it, I'm, I think I'll add one more edge loop here. So why to repeat the tool? Slide an edge loop this way, just so I can, again, preserve this detail when I hit that three button. And it looks pretty good. Um, back to extruding though, right? So we want to add some thickness because even though this seems fine, we have a few problems really. We don't have a hole in the top. I mean, that seems kind of obvious. And not only do we not have a hole in the top, but we actually don't have any glass thickness. This is paper thin. Um, if we're trying to save on polygons, then that might be okay. It actually probably would be okay to save on polygons here. Um, but to be completely honest, that won't look as good when you render it because you want the inside and the outside, I repeat, of the bottle to give yourself some thickness, right? Hit that three button again. That's good. I think, I, I think that's pretty close to the shape I'm after, but back to my original point about adding thickness. So some of you might be saying at this point, well, if I just make the curve and revolve it, uh, that saves a lot of time. And you know what? That's fine. If you want to do it that way, I'm just trying to go over multiple ways to do anything, right? So um, to add thickness here, though, I would first actually want to make a hole. Normally, I don't want to make a hole. But because I'm adding thickness and there's a hole, of course, in the bottle, let's just go for it. So double click the edge loop, hit Control F11 to convert that to faces. That makes a hole. And now we just extrude so that we have some thickness. So again, F8 and now extrude. Um, if we turn the, like if we go this way, we're gonna go out, extrude out. And that's probably the way to go in this case. If you happen to extrude inwards, you can still extrude inwards, but your normals will be flipped. Not really a big deal as long as you reverse the surface under mesh display reverse, that works too. Um, but now I have a perfect wine bottle that actually does have thickness. Um, the lip is a little, maybe a little mm, uh, sharp, I guess you could say. So again, if you wanted to, you could make sure that this holds its shape a little bit better by adding, you guessed it, a few more edge loops. And now when we hit the three button, you see it, it'll hold that shape a little bit better. This edge loop, if it's not doing anything for you, you can get rid of it. And the way you delete edge loops, of course, is control backspace. That way you get rid of the vertices. Otherwise, if you just click backspace, the vertices will be left behind. But control backspace takes out the edge loop, takes out the vertices. And you can see in this case, nothing changes with the shape. So the way that you think about your um, poly count is if I take out an edge loop, again, control backspace, does that change the shape? And if the answer is yes, clearly it does, then you shouldn't take out the edge loop, leave it in there. Um, but if you can take the edge loop out and it doesn't change anything, then it's probably one you can take out. All right, so there's your wine bottle. Um, if you wanna, of course, add your reference to the um, reference um, display layer, you can do that by going to right click, add select objects, that way both references in case in this case the wine glass and wine bottle um, are easy to hide but I guess that's about it and I'm hoping that this recorded well enough because having some technical issues today but there's your wine bottle all right save it <laughs> clearly like I keep saying you can drag and drop or import any of these into your existing scene but I think that's gonna be it for this one